I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Um, start with a sitting meditation. So find a way to sit that's upright and relaxed. Make any adjustments necessary to your posture. I know there can sometimes be the temptation when on Zoom to turn your camera off and do other things during meditation. I encourage you to, I mean, if you wanna turn your camera off, that's fine. But of course, this is a meditation group. We're here to meditate together. So I invite you to join me in gently allowing your eyes to be closed. Taking a moment to adjust the posture and release any unnecessary tension that you can release. Softening the brow, the eyes jaw. I've noticed that my, my shoulders have been a bit tight all day, trying to shake that out, softening, letting gravity pull the body into the chair, the cushion, the couch, wherever you're lounging this evening. Breathing in, feel the sensations that the breath creates as you inhale. Breathing out, letting go, softening your heart, your belly. That whole front corridor, throat, chest, belly. With each out breath, each exhale, softening. Softening and establishing the intention of compassion. the aspiration to meet pain with friendliness and care, with mercy and empathy. To respond wisely to pain, both our own pain and the pain of others. You may simply just voice the internal aspiration, may I meet pain with compassion. And see each act of softening the belly, releasing the jaw, relaxing the neck and shoulders as an act of compassion, as an act of mercy on ourselves. As we know, holding on tight, clenching, clinging, Unnecessary tension creates suffering. Releasing, relinquishing, relaxing into this present moment just as it is, relieves suffering as an act of compassion towards our 
pain. With this intention towards compassion, establish mindfulness in your own body. Present time, non judgmental, compassionate attention towards your own direct experience in this moment. The breath coming and going. thoughts and emotions present in the mind, body, heart. Sounds and perhaps smell and taste, images. And all of the sensations created by sitting, upright, relaxed, And we bring the intention of compassion to our moment to moment experience. And sometimes in the beginning, it's simply tolerance, the most compassionate thing that we can do is to just sit here and tolerate the uncomfortable thoughts and feelings and emotions and sensations. Even if we're aversive, we still just tolerate it with tolerating with aversion. And eventually we move towards mercy and compassion for our own mind and heart and body. turning towards the pain. We can use the Tibetan practice of Tung Len, breathing in. We turn towards, we embrace, we acknowledge all of our own pain, how painful it is in your body, in your heart, in your mind. All of the unpleasantness that we have to bear, that we experience. Breathing out, we reestablish the aspiration of compassion. May I meet my own pain with care, with friendliness, with mercy and empathy. May I learn to care about my own painful thoughts and feelings.
unpleasant sensations, perceptions. Breathing in, we acknowledge what's here. Breathing out, we train the heart and mind to respond with friendliness and compassion. Even if we can't do it yet, just the attempt, just the intention. to meet my own pain with compassion. Breathing in, I am aware, I'm awake to the unpleasant thoughts and feelings and sensations. To the grief, the sorrow, the sadness the anger, the frustration. Breathing out, may I learn to care about these painful thoughts and feelings and experiences. Training the heart, mind, in the skillful response of caring rather than hating, judging, fearing. We learn to meet even the hatred and fear, even the judgments with care. Breathing in, I feel my own pain. Breathing out, learning to care about my own pain. And if there's a part of your mind that feels like this practice is selfish or self-indulgent in some way, remember your worthiness. Remember your interconnectedness to all other living beings. That we're all worthy and that we develop compassion, true compassion from the inside out.
invite you to begin to expand from the establishment of compassion for ourselves. The first compassion for each other for this Sangha, people from all over the planet, all over the country. And extending this practice of feeling, empathizing with the pain that we all experience. And meeting it with compassion, breathing in each other's pain, the willingness to feel, the fears, the anger, the sadness. the frustration, breathing out compassion towards each other's painful parts. As we connect from all over the country East Coast, West Coast, North, South, Middle. And then extending further into your locality, locate yourself in your space that you're in. Think about who's close to you, other people in the home or neighbors, people in the building. with bringing awareness to their pain. And they too suffer. And breathing in a willingness to feel Breathing out the intention to care or to at least be tolerant, not so judgmental or critical. As we move towards mercy and compassion. And remember to soften your belly and release your jaw. We tense up when we are resisting, when we're clinging. Compassion is not tense, it's relaxed. It's open, it's spacious making room for all of the pain, not pushing it away, 
We're letting it pass through us, our willingness to feel as we breathe it in. And letting it go, softening as we breathe out. Expanding throughout your neighborhood to the east and west, north and south. To the people who are in their homes. The people without homes. The people on the streets protesting. Breathing in the pain that is being experienced. Breathing out compassion. Even towards the police, bringing in the those we see as enemies, as difficult. Compassion is inclusive. All beings suffer. All beings are worthy of compassion. Even the most confused. As you expand to the east, all beings in the east, to the west, all beings in the west, to the north and south, And allow the practice to become the simple phrase in your heart, may all beings be free from suffering. The beings experiencing oppression the beings experiencing privilege, the wise beings and the unwise beings, and even the oppressors, may they be free from suffering. which includes our own 
internal tyrants, oppressors in our own hearts and minds, our own ignorance, as well as everyone else's. May all beings, none left behind, be met with compassion. May all beings learn to meet their own pain with compassion. Learn to meet each other with compassion. Softening, opening, feeling the great capacity that we have, greater than we know, so often the mind says it will overwhelm you, it'll be too much, it resists. But part of our human ability, all beings, this Buddha nature, is an unlimited capacity for spacious, open, compassionate, as one teacher said, a heart as wide as the world. Our true heart is not small, it's not limited. Including all being.
can take the last couple of minutes to simply return to your own being, your own body. Maybe there's some discomfort from sitting still. This is really the best place to practice. Learn to care about your own pain. The more tolerant, the more merciful, the more compassionate we become with our own difficulties, the more room we have to genuinely respond with compassion to others. Breathe in your pain, breathe out. Mercy and compassion towards your own pain. And when you're ready, bring this compassionate perspective to opening your eyes, uh, moving a bit, releasing the posture. And again, welcome to everyone. Really happy to um, be with faces and not just names on a screen. <laughs> uh, even though I can only see, I don't know what it is, 20 people at a time. Um, and compassion. So needed, if you think about your own suffering today, how much of it was about created by, how much of your own unhappiness today was created by Aversion, anger, hatred, or clinging, craving, judgment, fear. Um, compassion is central, is necessary, is the antidote to so much of the suffering that we experience, that we cause, that we witness. And so strange, um, but seems to be true that we're just not born with compassion. It's an actually a very radical um, endeavor to truly become friendly and tolerant and merciful and kind towards pain. And I know that you know this. Um, I know that most of you know this and all of you that sit with me have been hearing me say this over and over in all of the different ways for. And of course, there's a part of us that naturally cares about others. There's part of our uh, heart and mind that is 
loving and kind. Um, but it's not, nobody's just able to do that all of the time without some real training, without some real uncovering and awakening that meditation training, skills that meditation training allow us to uncover a compassionate heart that I don't think people that, that haven't done the work, this sort of excavation, this, this investigation and uh, turning towards and the willingness to feel um, doesn't happen all by itself. In this realm that we've been born into, this form that we've been born into, is a setup for suffering. We're born with this instinctual survival drive to push away pain, to hate pain, to be afraid of pain, to ignore, suppress, medicate, avoid, cover our pain with anger rather than allowing ourselves to feel sadness, sorrow, grief, hurt. And the Buddha directs us to that this is the path, the path to freedom, the path to happiness is learning to embody, to feel our pain, to feel the emotions, the thoughts, the unpleasant sounds and smells and images and sickness and aging and death. The path to freedom is turning towards all of the and I'm just talking about compassion tonight. Of course, there's all of the pleasure and joy and, but we're not talking about that shit right now. <laughs> I'm not negating that, um, you know, that often life is wonderful. I'm just talking about addressing the parts of life, the parts of living in this world, the parts of incarnation that are not wonderful, that are hard to bear. And of course, I'm thinking about this specifically because of what's happening in our country right now and the pain that is always here, the ignorance and the oppression and the racism and the violence and the, that is always here bubbling up and exploding. Um, into uh, and being it's being expressed and, and and it's being expressed in beautiful ways and it's being expressed in uh, not so beautiful ways and but it's always here um, and of course the buddhist perspective is compassion and um, compassionate acts, compassionate feelings, compassionate activism, compassionate uh, response to the racist structure of our society and compassion for the deep ignorance that has created the systemic racism of our world not just our society, the whole fucking world. Seeing that, understanding it, as we understand our own mind and our own 
ignorance and our own racist conditioning and our own blindness to our own privilege, if that's our experience and no longer being blind, turning towards the reality of our experience in this world and the reality of other people's experience in the world being different than ours, but, and, and more painful or less painful, but everyone, first noble truth, everyone's suffering. And everyone's suffering is worthy of compassion. Even this radically unpopular view, even the oppressors, even the police, even the murderers, even the corrupt politicians, even the most, the most confused are suffering the most. I, um, I'll open to some dialogue in a moment, but I was talking to a friend from the Sangha earlier about the suffering. And they asked me, you know, how do you make sense of it? How do we make sense of all of this injustice and ignorance and confusion in our world? And I was saying, in, as I, uh, one of the, uh, you know, the, the direct experience of the Buddha's teachings of, um, of meditation, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, mindfulness and compassion, like the direct experience of, of the Buddha's teachings as we apply them are the most important to me. Most important, embodied direct experience. This is suffering. This is the cause of suffering. This is how we end suffering. But also some of the philosophical framework, what we could call some of the cosmology um, of this question of like, well, why is the world like this? Why is ignorance the norm? Why is racism the norm? Why is... Um, oppression, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, gender uh, wars and, and cl class wars and, uh, you know, why is inequality, why is that human history and presence and future? Why is it like this? Um, and the, the Buddhist framework where he says, you know, this is, this is what's happening in this realm. We are in samsara. We've incarnated uh, into this human realm in samsara. And samsara is a realm that is fueled by greed, hatred, and delusion. That's what's happening here. We've taken birth into this realm of craving for pleasure, of hatred, of pain, and all of the ways that that is then manifested in families and in cultures and in societies so that creates capitalism and creates slavery and uh, it creates um, genocides and, and no matter how much uh, education, no matter how much um, theoretically we come to understand racism is wrong, oppression is wrong, uh, everyone of course is equal, uh, it doesn't take away that human greed 
it doesn't take away, you know, theoretically understanding it without true compassion, without really letting ourselves feel the pain. And so few of us, so few people are really uh, willing to turn towards it and feel it and transform our relationship to it. We keep running from it, thinking that the next purchase, that the next relationship, that the next pleasant adventure, whatever it is, we're always just seeking this, uh, if I can avoid the pain and experience the pleasure, and it's a dead end the world as the source of our happiness is a dead end. And not only will the world never provide our happiness, this demand for the world to provide our happiness is what is causing the oppression and the racism and the environmental destruction and the, this demand onto the world to create our happiness is part of the root of what is destroying the planet. So last thought, uh, and then want to open to some questions. The Buddha was quite clear that there is no external refuge. This world will never provide our happiness. That it's totally an inside job. We have to do the work inside us. We have to free our own mind, our own heart from confusion. We have to develop compassion, our own effort, meditate, and destroy the causes of suffering. This is the core teaching. Practice renunciation and practice generosity and practice service and be engaged and take full responsibility. I think it was last week, I, I, my whole talk was full responsibility for our own happiness. Nobody can do it for us. And we can't do it for anybody else. That having been said, the Buddha then spent his whole life as an activist speaking out against the racist system of his culture, of the Indian caste system that is based on race and color and privilege and power and not so different from our Western culture. They had slaves, they had untouchables, they had all of this, and this continues in India to this day, the great racist oppression. Uh, terrible situation, and we can find it in almost every culture. And America has a especially intense history of this from the uh, genocide of the Native American people and the oppression of slavery and the oppression of every immigrant that comes to this country. And um, we're all immigrants and And the Buddha spent his life saying we have to do the work ourselves and speaking out against racism and speaking out against sexism and empowering people and teaching uh, equality. All beings have the power to awaken. Men, women, children, black, white, brown, everyone has Buddha nature. 
and this was a very unpopular and radical and uh, subversive teaching and was the ruling class, the privileged class, uh, did not like uh, what the Buddha was doing and there was accusations and uh, assassination attempts and, you know, uh, the Buddha was quite despised for being, for believing in equality and for empowering everyone to wake up uh, based on our own efforts, free from religion and free from uh, delusional belief system. Compassion is our only hope. And I believe we have to develop it from the inside for it to be fully genuine and action is part of it. Engagement is part of our duty to try to create a positive change on this planet. Uh, even if we're not going to succeed, even if we're not, you know, even if the environmental destruction is way beyond, even if the fabric of racism, racism is, uh, uh, so woven into human culture that we can't undo it, we still have to try. And it's so beautiful and so inspiring to me to see the thousands or million, however many people in the street saying, we're gonna try. So cool. I'm, you know, somewhat skeptical about human beings. <laughs> uh, and I've uh, mostly just been uh, inspired by human beings in the streets marching for the Black Lives Matter and the women's marches and the, you know, just the, the, the engagement that's happening uh, is, is beautiful. It is beautiful. And um, that's what I think. <laughs> what do you think? 